Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, Art and I are with our favorite food and travel writer, John Mariani. John, good to see you again. Good afternoon, boys. Hi, John. <laughs> you know, Hi. Uh, you're, you do a lot of travel when before the pandemic, and I suspect that you're uh, chomping at the bit to uh, get back out on the road as soon as it's uh, uh, safer or maybe even sooner. Uh, do you have any tips uh, about the best way to stay safe, uh, things that you're going to do uh, to protect yourself against uh, whatever is out there still hanging around? Yeah, it's true. Um, assuming that COVID will be beaten uh, sometime this year, um, Americans can probably get moving in America, travel around America, maybe by June, July. And if uh, Europe opens up, which it isn't by a long shot, or even the Caribbean, um, it will, though. So we'll book our, book our flights and our hotels in the future. But you still, pretend COVID never happened, you still have to protect yourself and you still have to bring along with you a, a minor medicine chest uh, in your bag in order to um, protect yourself. Now, I've been a food and travel writer for more than 45 years. I have gotten gastrointestinally sick only four times uh, and by that, I mean just, you know, the, the typical Montezuma's revenge sort of thing. But only four times in 45 years. That's once every 10 years. Every single time, I can trace it directly to shellfish. And I'll talk about that in, in a little bit. Um, so if you're going to get sick, it's going to be on shellfish if you don't take any precautions. So here's the deal. We Americans are nice, healthy people, and uh, we're bugbears about, we're probably all hypochondriacs too, to a certain extent. <clears throat> and we think we can go anywhere and eat anything, and we should be okay, except, of course, don't drink the, the water in, 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 or in Italy and, and uh, that sort of thing. Well, a lot of those are, are myths too. So here's the deal you, the healthiest person on the face of the earth, can get deathly ill, even die, um, by simply picking up a bug that is completely inane to the people who live in Mexico, Nicaragua, Taiwan, Hong Kong, France, Italy, Greece. They got those bugs in them and beat. Their gut takes care of those bugs, okay? By bugs, I mean bacteria or, or viruses, okay? So the fact that you get one of their bugs in your system and it wreaks havoc on you uh, is no indication that, oh, their food is filthy, I can't, uh, I, I will never eat, eat in these places, I'm just going to eat in the hotels. That's nonsense. You could get it any day of the week and you could be sitting at the same table with six of your friends and they don't come down with it and you do. It's just the luck of the draw. But there are things you can do to prevent that from happening. Okay? Bing one. Uh, know what your allergies are. Now, I don't have any particular allergies to shellfish, per se, that I know of. Uh, I don't eat oysters because I don't, A, care for them, but B, because they are bottom feeders. Okay? Bottom feeders, that means they just sit there. They, just, they don't swim around. They don't go anywhere. They just sit there, and whatever comes through their shells at the bottom of the ocean, anything, they, it passes through them. And they either eat, and they purify the water that way, somewhat, some way. Okay? But they still can have, I forget the name of the virus uh, that they have. It begins with a V, and it can be very nasty. And if you eat them, the whole thing about um, oysters in the raw, don't eat them in months that uh, uh, don't have an R in them. Well, that's the summer months, June, July, August. There are R's and everything else, March, April, January, February. So you're perfectly safe eating oysters from a good source. Um, but uh, in these, what happens is in the warmer months, June, July, and August, um, this bacteria is more likely to grow. Shellfish that come from really cold water, like so-called Maine lobsters. Maine lobsters go from Nova Scotia all the way down to 
the Carolinas, same same species. But the colder the water, uh, the better it is uh, because bacteria don't like bone chillingly cold water. And it also is good because the animals themselves build up fat. A lobster is going to be it's at its most delicious from the coldest water because it got a lot of fat in there to protect itself from the cold water. Okay, so shellfish are risky mussels, clams, um, uh, crustaceans of that of that kind. If you're so prone, as I said, four times in 45 years of traveling, I don't worry about it too much. But I do concern myself if I get a huge platter of crawfish in front of me. Um, I'm not going to eat everything on the plate, as I once did in Spain. <laughs> it was really sick for three or four days. Um, killed the next three or four days. Okay, so that that's the the best thing. Water does carry bacteria. So while it is no longer true in, I would say, 75% of the world's cities, that you cannot drink the water from the tap. Um, it is still true out on the streets. It is still, you know, when they say, you know, the street food. It, street food is very, very risky. And the more you travel, probably the more things you pick up that will protect you from the next episode. But it is not a good idea to eat um, off the streets or to drink anything off from a public drinking fountain. But if you're checking into even a modest hotel in Paris, or Rome, or Taipei, or Hong Kong, that water is purified, it is filtered, and um, uh, whether or not the Europeans prefer to drink wine or beer is quite another thing, because they still have this, and they, well, they drink bottled water, they drink bottled water all the time, but it's bottled. Um, so that, that's not a real big, uh, big issue as far as uh, I'm concerned, except if you're in Nairobi. You know, or or the depths of uh, Afghanistan fighting uh, the, uh, the, the the Taliban. Don't, don't bring bring your water with you in a canteen. Much much better idea. Um, as for meat, uh, meat is is quite safe. Um, I, I remember being in Bangkok once, and going to their open market, and all of their seafood, all of their shellfish, all of their meat. We're lying out there, and you know how hot it gets in Bangkok. I mean, a, like a, a cool day is in the upper 80s, and more likely they're going to be in the 90s. So I'm saying, how, how can they eat this stuff? There's, there's, just, there's no ice at all. These, these these fish are sitting on just a wooden, a wooden, you know, a little little stand. And a friend of mine told me, he says, well, first of all, they are used to it. They got those bacteria in them already, so they're not going to be as prone. And this stuff comes in that morning. So that stuff is extremely fresh. And it all gets sold sometimes that very morning or by that day. So it's not like they're putting it on the side in a burlap bag and bringing it out the next morning. So you've got very, very fresh uh, seafood and meats and, and oysters and clams and everything. And it came just out of the sea. I mean, frankly, what could be better? Um, I was once in uh, Sardinia. Uh, and I got there at uh, 10, 10.30, 11 o'clock in the morning to the fish market where, where they also had a little trattoria. And I walked in, and there's no fish. There's no seafood in the stalls. And I said, I thought this was a fish. Was a fish. I thought this was a fish market. And they said, well, it is, but everything was sold by 10 o'clock. They bring the stuff in at 6 o'clock in the morning. Everything was gone. They were scrubbing the place down. All that was left was the stuff they served, they saved for the trattoria. So keep that in mind that it's not always going to be a nasty business. Um, when it comes to meat, uh, beef, uh, it depends on how these things are raised. Now, it used to be said that pork, still said by stupid people, ignoramuses, bombastos, idiots, still say, oh, you got to cook your pork till it's the, co the color of the bottom of your shoes. Otherwise, you're going to get a trichinosis. And, oh, well, you don't want trichinosis. It's a worm, and it gets in your muscles, and... No, you don't want trichinosis. Okay. Were you to get trichinosis from a pig, from eating ham or pork of any kind? And it's one of the reasons why the uh, the Jews in the Old Testament and uh, other countries, um, and the Muslims and so forth, do not eat pork because at that time it was a risky business to eat, eat pig. Um, so what happened was the, 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 it used to be, pigs used to... <laughs> eat everything, but were raised in very unsanitary conditions. Beef was not. Beef cattle were just out there, 
nibbling away, eating grain, eating eating wheat and so forth on the, on the grasslands. Pigs were not. They were back on the farm eating all sorts of stuff. Um, consequently, <clears throat> the pork was not always so dependable health-wise, and it could pass on trichinosis. This is no longer true. <clears throat> there were only... Every year for the past 20 years in the United States, there have been no more than 20, 12 to 20 cases of trichinosis in the entire country in one year. And of those 12 to 20, 11 or 19 of them came from people going out in the wild and eating wild game that was not inspected. A wild game, even a fish, a beautiful trout out of the best, cleanest river, in, 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 in Oregon can have bacteria that you don't have, going back to that. Okay? But when it comes to pigs, they're very, very well raised at this point, and the chances of getting trichinosis is, is really, well, I guess it's about one in 350 million in the United States if only 10 or 12 people get it, and you're not going to get it from the pig anyway. So cook pig to pink is fine, gray is stupid, it has no flavor left, um, as a matter of fact, my wife accidentally pulled a pork chop off the uh, griddle of the grill a few nights ago, and it was rare. I said, well, that's a little rare. Um, it was delicious. It was absolutely as good as the steak. had lots of flavor. Once you go too much further than that, you got to brine it and do other things to make it tender and taste good. Okay? So that that's what you should know about pig. Um, one thing in New York Times... Uh, health writer Jane Brody wrote some years ago, and although she's not a doctor, she's a health writer, so she knows the stuff. She said that she, before every meal when she goes away, uh, when she goes on, on vacation, before every meal, uh, she took two Pepto-Bismol caplets. Um, I don't think it probably doesn't mean any difference whether you take a caplet or a, or a pill or, or whatever, just a swig of the stuff. But she says that coats the stomach um, as it does when you are actually in need of Pepto-Bismol. And it coats the stomach and keeps the bad bacteria out, and it just passes through your body. I do not know if that's true. I happen to think that's an awful lot of Pepto-Bismol to take if you're away for 10 days. And that's going to do things to your system which could clamp you up and otherwise. But that was her. Uh, I tried that... Um, for a few days, but see, I, I just don't get sick very often anyway, so I did that when I was in Mexico maybe 20 years ago. I would not do it, or I would not bother to do so now. Well, I have to, so, I have to uh, uh, endorse uh, much of what you were saying, because when I was uh, 12 years old, around 12, my parents uh, and sister and I uh, hopped in the car and went from New York down to Mexico. We went all throughout Mexico. Um, and everything was great. We got over the border the first night we stayed in Mexico. Uh, I had a Coca-Cola that was sitting in a bucket of ice and, a, and I got Montezuma's revenge and we wound up being there for two, three days while I was getting over that. And I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't even go into the pool. Uh, I had my own little room with door on it. And it was really small. So that's where I spent that time. But after that, for the rest of the trip, I started drinking coffee, black coffee, because it was boiled water. And I would only have bottled water. I remember uh, uh, the brand that I liked the most was from a place called Pena Fiel. Uh, I don't know whether it still exists. It was a spa, probably uh, sparkling water. Uh, and I was fine for the rest of the trip. But I remember also uh, traveling a lot in the United States. We have, uh, uh, I guess, water regulations that puts a lot of chemicals in there so that we're pretty safe. You go from city to city and it may be softer water or harder water, but you're probably not going to get sick because of it. But when you go to another, when people from other countries come here, they also uh, uh, from time to time get sick from our water and things that are going on here that they're not used to. So um, uh, I, I can endorse what you're saying that just uh, be careful. I mean, it would be one of those four times that I got sick in my entire life, uh, gastrointestinally, was from one, I know it, because I, I was at in New Orleans, and there's a plate of clams, mm. and I had one clam, and I could tell, hmm, it didn't taste so good. Yeah. But three hours later, I was prostrate. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that's true. You, you 
most of the time you can you get a hint while you're eating it or mm -hmm. you just smell it and it doesn't smell right I, I the one of the very few times i ever got intestinal uh sick was in marina del rey i had a tuna melt mm -hmm. now this is marina del rey it's a pretty upscale neighborhood and i ordered a standard american tuna melt mm -hmm. but you know as i was eating it and i smelled it it just didn't taste bad it just somehow just tasted off well and we Take, uh, really trust your smell when it comes mm -hmm. to seafood. The French have an expression that if it smells like fish, it's not fresh. You say, well, fish is supposed to smell like fish. No. Um, there are some fish like mullet and, and others that have a strong mackerel, that, but they still should still smell fresh and of the sea. But if you hold um, like a carton of um, uh, unpasteurized, let's say, crab meat, which I buy all the time, I always take the lid off and smell it. And if it has a slight, and I mean the slightest whiff of fishiness, I give it back to the guy and say, you shouldn't be selling this. Um, and that goes for all mm. fish. Uh, fish, uh, 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 aside from what I said, from the selling the fish in Bangkok and Italy, which comes in and disappears th that morning, um, that in America, uh, you, if you have, if you are lucky enough to have a fishmonger, a real fish store, a seafood store, or even a, let's face it, a really good supermarket like you have in California, or most places in the United States at this point, what you want to see is the fish on the ice, and ice dumped over onto the fish, also, you know, with just yeah. a little head sticking out there, um, not just put on top of melting ice. If it's on top of melting ice, that means that ice, how long does ice take to melt? You know, an hour or two. That's what it's been sitting uh, for. So, so look for that. Look for real fresh ice. Yeah, and as a as a last point, I wanted to um, say that I think your your caution about let's say street food versus a restaurant, hotel restaurant, is really um, really smart because uh, let's face it, uh, every place I've traveled, which is not extensively, um, the restaurants and the and the hotels particularly are very careful about their food. Uh, they're catering to Americans as well as Europeans, and they know they can't take a chance on anybody getting sick. Street vendors, hey, you're taking your chances. It's the local cuisine. And in, again, in the cities, there are now health inspectors who can be trusted. Um, in the past, they could be trusted uh, to say, you got really bad product here, throw it out. In the past, they would want money <laughs> in order to say that, um, but uh, that, that's that's not true anymore. And as you said, in the big hotel, big and small hotels, um, especially Ta Thai, uh, not Thailand, uh, Taiwan, um, is an extraordinary food culture. And because of this taint that foreigners have, that oh, watch what you eat in in China, watch what you eat in in Asia, and in India, and stuff, they are the most hygienic. Uh, food handlers in the world. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. And great advice on traveling. Thank you. Anytime. Bon voyage. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.